Okay, welcome to NDI November, building the best network infrastructure for NDI. Tonight, Laurent is my special guest from Netgear. We've had him on our shows before. He's done a lot of great stuff telling us about why and how Netgear decided to focus on this unique market. I think we've hit that before, and you can see that on other videos if you want to. Today's show is really going to be a primer on NDI, networking, and, and where to go on it. So first, if you love this hat, I love it too. I was told that I'm not allowed to tell you how you can get one, so I, I'm not going to, but I am going to tell you that these are really great hats and NDI November hats, bucket hats. We love the bucket hat. Laurent, we'll send one to you. All right, buddy. Thank you, Gary. And thanks for having Netgear today. Great. I wanted to give a quick rundown. If you can bring this up full speed, people, I am not going to read this out loud, but this is the topics we're going to cover today. We're going to go over, you know, the core things of the technology, why you should choose Netgear, which Netgear is the right one. We're going to have a demo. We're going to go into a case study, and then we're going to go into where the future looks a little bit too. But I know this is going to be a long show, so... There's your guide on what it's going to look like. Hit pause if you need to read the whole thing. And I went, took it too far. So terms to learn is very important. You know, th th this is really the IT section of NDI. So, Laurent, the terms that we have are POE power, total power, SFP. Why don't you explain to our audience what those mean and how Netgear uses them in terms of selecting the right switch? Of course, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, in the AV world, and uh, it's very true for the NDI ecosystem, everything is powered by Ethernet, right? So that you don't have a power supply, you know, for your cameras or your encoders and decoders. So the power of Ethernet has been there for the past 25 years, and, and it's, uh, you know, very standard. So PUE 15 watts, PUE plus, most of the, the cameras are PUE plus, they consume up to 30 watts. And then you have the ultra PUE plus plus, 802.3BT, which goes up to the 90 watts for, for Netgear. And yes, the large cameras, you know, with PTZ and all that, they might require more than 30 watts so you need to watch out if it's more than 30 watts you need a PUE++ switch and uh, well with the Netgear AV line we have uh, approximately one third of our switches that can do that then you have the the the, the maximum PUE budget you know don't get fooled if you see that the switch has some PUE ports you also need to calculate do the math uh, how much PUE watts you need all the those devices they consume you know they, they draw out of the switches a certain amount of power so the PUE switches need to have a large PUE bank and sometimes you may uh, decide that there's could not be a single point of failure so it's also important to understand if you have redundancy with two power sources so that you can have your PUE budget guaranteed if the UPS A is falling down but you still have the UPS B uh, uh, you know providing power to the switch so redundant power supplies are something uh, sometimes great to have especially in kind of mission critical shows you know I mean like yours Gary yeah. so, and, and Warren, then, just for a quick second, so it's straight math right so if I have a PTZ camera that takes 30 watts and I want to run three of them I better have at least 120 watts because I need to have those three and I need to have headroom for whatever else is being powered by the switch at that time, correct? There's no fancy formulas, right? It's pretty basic. To no, out what you need. no. Uh, because, I mean, for once, for once only, the IT guys, they made it simple. <laughs> so when we say when we say the camera needs 30 watts, this is the quantity of power that the switch got to deliver. Even yep. if you know that you have some loss on the cable and the camera will actually get approximately 80% of it, doesn't matter. So yes, uh, you need to look at the camera power. Uh, if it's 30 watts, you multiply, do the math, and it's very important to get, keep some headroom. You're right, because you never know what, what else you know can be plugged in. And then what's SFP and why is that on a switch? So small form factor pluggable transceiver. So uh, when I was younger in this IT industry, 35 years ago, I was very often asked, hey, Laurent, why don't you put the, directly the fiber connectors on the switches? But the reason is that you can't know in advance which type of fiber, single mode, multi-mode, different grades, you know? So because we can't know which fiber, you have in your infrastructure we switch manufacturers we just provide those sfp ports and then depending on the fiber that you have you will select uh, the right transceiver all right so 
it's very simple actually. SFP is for one gigabit. SFP plus, same form factor, it's for 10 gigabits. And then you go up uh, SFP 28 for 25 gigabits, SFP, QSFP plus for 40 gigabit, etc. So cool. the uh, uh, pluggable transceivers need to be carefully selected because it's uh, the speed and then the type of fiber. And those are mainly used to tie in switches to other switches to the broader part of the network rather than like bringing in a PTZ camera, correct? This is uh, right. Uh, although you may have sometimes endpoints directly right. with fiber, because if it's a fixed installation, you know, sometimes, uh, you know uh, that uh, when you and I will be retired, uh, you, we, we, we will have a terabits, right, as a, as a speed. And, and the terabits will, can run on a single mode, like a 30-year-old FDDI-grade a single mode fiber. So if you have a retrofit to do, my best advice, get rid of your multi-mode fiber, which is topped already, cannot do more than 100 meters at 25 gig, and go install single mode, much better, future-proof. Cool, let's talk about what are the key components we need for an NDI network, of which, of course, the first thing is a switch, which is this next slide I thought was a good way for you to really give an overview from a IT perspective for video people what do you need to set up a proper NDI network? Absolutely. So, you know, uh, first of all, uh, NDI, uh, for now, most of the NDI installation, it's wired, so it needs CAT5, CAT6, so you need a switch. And uh, NDI is kind of a demanding technology uh, for switching, so much better to go with the certified NDI switch platform, such as the Netgear AV line uh, uh, for it. Then uh, the NDI network, when you have the switch, well, you just need to have your endpoints. So it's actually your sources and destinations. It's always like that. You can transmit AV across the network. So the uh, uh, cameras, uh, you know, are typical uh, sources. You can also have encoders that will uh, take SDI or HDMI from the cameras and turn that packetizing it in to a RG45 uh, a source. Uh, all these uh, uh, sources connect to the switch, and then on the other side, you have your clients, your uh, receivers, your uh, decoders, if you have a uh, 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 HDMI out to do, or directly your production servers. So all these NDI sources and destinations, all this NDI ecosystem usually connects to a NDI capable network infrastructure. Uh, take care of your cabling. You used to take great care of your HDMI or, uh, you know, uh, SDI cabling. Uh, I would say it's the same uh, with Ethernet. You know, the layer one, this is always, always the cabling that may cause the weird issues such as packet loss and bad transmission. So very important to have a, a good certified cabling. CAT5 is good enough for one gigabit, but uh, future proof go directly with CAT6, CAT6E, uh, uh, because, you know, this way, CAT6A, pardon me, CAT6A, this way uh, you, you are future proof for 10 gigabit uh, later on. And Laurent, uh, I want to interrupt you for a second because we've seen with like a lot of schools and churches, a lot of time they think they have the right cabling, but they don't understand that even one run in the wrong place or the wrong cabling can really mess everything up. So our recommendation really is get CAT6 if you're gonna do NDI. You can do five, be sure, get CAT6, be future proof. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, the one gigabit standard, you know, it's good enough. You need four pairs. So CAT5 was okay. But yes, the problem in those schools typically is that, you know, the cabling is aging. Right. You know, it's, it's wearing. So uh, uh, it's very important that in any in any doubt, you know, it's much better to have a, a, a new run. And you're right, CAT6A is uh, CAT6, CAT6A is, is future-proof. And then you need to test it, you know, uh, you need to test it, uh, 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 even a simple uh, cable tester, you know, to have the end-to-end, -end, yep. uh, very beware of the patch panels and those jumpers and, and all that, you know, the, the cleaner it is, the better. Right, every patch is a potential point of failure. Right. Cool. Then let's go over PoE support because we talked about it with the switch, which makes sense. But that's another reason where you got to make sure your cabling and your, your terminations are right because 
the loss on the POE could be dramatic if you have older deteriorating network infrastructure, correct? Absolutely. So uh, don't forget that the power of Ethernet, it's a standard IEEE organization. So uh, PUE, PUE, PUE Plus or Ultra PUE 90 watts, it's always, always guaranteed 400 meters. So 323 feet, right? But it's true for perfect condition like new cabling. So uh, another reason to uh, uh, take care of, of the cabling, because uh, don't forget one thing, Gary, and, and uh, all the audience today. Uh, now that the network is the fabric for the EV and uh, for the NDI, the, the, yeah. the fabric is really much the network. You can't have any transmission issue, you know, and, and when you, you have power, you add some more requirements on the cabling. You need to have perfect transmission with a good enough, uh, you know, uh, UTP is, is okay, FTP is okay too. It, it's, it doesn't really matter. What matters is a perfect condition point to point uh, for, for your CAT6. Now, the next thing is network configuration. And can we bring this up full screen? Because I want people to see this. We've got some stuff that's a little scary in the IT world. What I want to stress is one of the reasons you go with a Netgear switch is because it's actually got a graphical GUI to get you through this IT mumbo jumbo of words on the bottom bullet, correct? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to, you know, I, I, we need to be fast, I know. But uh, so don't get me started on the configuration. But uh, when we started at Netgear to do the EV, uh, you know, this initiative 10 years ago, we understood it was a last battle. You know, it was a utopia to actually train all of you yeah. on, you know, the IGMP and other multicast weird uh, notions. So we uh, stopped that. And uh, thankfully, uh, we got uh, some time during the pandemics. Remember 2020, yeah. we started from white uh, page uh, and uh, we totally reinvented our software. So now you're right. At least we got rid of all that complexity because uh, I said your fabric. So, that, you know, you need to have good cabling, that's for sure, but you need to have also perfect, neat configuration for your NDI because your NDI demands a very specific configuration. So now, well, we just, uh, just a matter of us of a certified profile that we can just bring to the ports, put a color on them, and that's it. Yeah, I think we found that when we were first selling NDI products, Nine out of 10 times the problem a person was having was the configuration of their switch. Nine out of 10 times the problem with the configuration of their switch wasn't that their switch wasn't a good enough switch. It was that the person configuring it didn't understand AV over IP at all. So it didn't make the switch bad. It just meant you needed an IT degree and an understanding of AV to make it work. You guys solved all that by coming up with the switches that have templates, that have presets that are actually optimized for NDI, Dante, and other AVI over a IP uh, solutions. So I want to jump right into that. But before we do, there's a little confusion out there between the different flavors of NDI. And right now, you know, the two basic ways people are going is high bandwidth or HX3. Now, you guys can configure for either or both, which is really great. But talk to me a little bit about why you would want one or the other in your network. Well, so uh, first of all, the ND, NDI is uh, the only AV over IP technology in the world that is both a transport and a codec. So again, some IT notions, but from a switch perspective, it's very important. So the NDI uh, as a whole needs specific configuration for the transport, NDI5, reliable UDP, NDI4, multiple TCP, and so on and so on. And on the codec side of things, so this is how the packets are, you know, compressing the, the, the video and transporting that in the payload of the, the packets, you, the switch needs configuration too. So to answer your question, uh, when we do transport EV, uh, from a point A to a point B on the network, for instance, between the camera and the uh, uh, a production server, uh, like a I don't know uh, any any production server, you you have requirements that are the level of quality and also the latency. So what we know is that the the less bandwidth, 
the more compression, the more latency, right? You cannot have it all. It's right. uh, it's like that in AV world. So when we have a requirement for a very low bandwidth, but uh, it it means that we can actually accept and sustain some more latency. But reversely, when we have higher requirements in terms of a pixel perfect type of quality, especially if you have a live shows with some sports, you know, uh, yep. frames, uh, you, you need to have, you know, a, a, a better quality. So if you want a better quality and less latency, then you need to give up a little bit on the bandwidth. And then you will go with the full flash, full blown NDI uh, to get that. So that's the great thing with NDI because you have options. You can actually decide which type of transport and codec you can have. Cool. This next one is the top five reasons why we recommend Netgear Pro AV 4250 switches. So you're just gonna smile because you love these. Number one, engineered for AV over IP. Number two, Netgear is committed to Pro AV. Number three, easy to configure. Number four, presets for NDI HX and NDI 5. Recommended by all of our partners, PC Optics, VizRT, BirdDog, et cetera. And the number one reason, which is the overarching reason, which is Netgear Pro AV 4250s is our number one NDI tech support solution. I can't tell you how often we have a church or a school or a company that's doing NDI and they're just complaining a certain camera's not working, something's not right on the system. We tell them what switch do you have? Do you have an IT person configured it correctly or incorrectly? And we find out that we get them a Netgear switch and the problems go away. And I'm telling you, when you first came out with these switches, we would tell people get this Netgear switch if it doesn't solve all your problems, they'll give you your money back. You know how many we got back, Laurent? Zero. Why? Because wow. they just work better than any other switch in an NDI environment, period. And that is why it's our number one NDI tech support solution. So kudos to you guys on that. It was needed. It was desperately needed in the world of NDI. And you really solved the problem that it, sometimes we make products because engineers want products. Sometimes we make products that solve problems. You guys solved the problem. You've done it spectacularly. And I just, I can't thank you and the gang at Netgear enough because it's Netgear, NDI would not have flourished to the level it has now without your switches. I firmly believe that. Well, thank you, uh, Gary. And let me quickly say two things, okay? F fast. Uh, 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 you know, it, it didn't happen, you know, overnight. So <laughs> it, it was a long process. But uh, yes, we find the right method. So uh, all the developments, all these uh, efforts uh, uh, in the software, but the hardware too, uh, we have a professional AV council in Netgear, believe it or not. So 20 uh, not celebrities, but uh, consultants, uh, uh, CFO, CTOs, uh, system integrators, big, small, large, and uh, all together, you know, as soon as we need to do something, we just gather and we discuss and then we can uh, 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 provide this innovation. So thank you, because uh, uh, the configuration for the GUI, for instance, is, is, a, is a good example, you know, of a wish list from uh, EV pros uh, like you. And the second thing, I wanted to say is that, uh, you know, you asked me before the difference between HX yeah. and the real NDI mm -hmm. and said that that's right, we have certified and it took us a fair amount of time to get to that certification level with new tech and, and VisoT and now the NDI.TV group. Uh, but um, uh, for, for the switch, don't worry. It's the same. So uh, we en we engineered the NDI profile to do both, and we can even do both at the same time on the same ports, right? So uh, we have one NDI five profile that is approved both for HX and for the the real NDI. Yeah, and I think the thing that's important about this is, and we're going to get to a, a demo of the GUI in a second, but not only do you guys have this incredible hardware that's been optimized. You've got a GUI that's been made for normal people to be able to use. You don't have to be an IT engineer, but also I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that you guys have probably the best tech support in the industry, and that is both pre-sales and post-sales. So let's say I have an NDI, one of your switches, and I've been beating on it for six months, and now I'm adding you know six more cameras and another TriCaster to the mix, and I'm just flustered. You have sales techs who can actually get on the phone with anyone who owns one of your switches, and help a person optimize it and grow it forever they want to go. And your answer may be, 
you got to add another switch. You're pushing it. Your answer may be, well, why don't we try this on that? And we'll set up a separate VLAN. I mean, you guys just have this great level of expertise. So it's super easy GUI, but there are incredibly brilliant people behind you if you get into trouble. And it's free to everyone who owns a Netgear switch. So why don't you take away the demo and uh, I'll stop talking. All right, Gary, thank you. And uh, that's why to, to us, a, a product, it's a hardware and software and also the support that goes with it. So the Pro EV design team, the Pro EV design team is actually 24 hour uh, uh, for you available. All right, so you, now you can see my screen. I uh, manipulate a, a software that is free of charge, Netgear Engage, that's a controller. You go to netgear.com slash engage and you download it for free for your Windows PC like I do or your Macintosh. And uh, this controller can see all the switches you have on your network like me right now. As you can see, I have a, I have a bunch of them. And um, uh, this controller now, uh, uh, is going to be a uh, new version live next week. So, of course, I'm, I'm uh, using the next 1.3 that we are going to be live with next week. All right. So the current controller uh, has uh, maybe some less functions, but uh, you'll see next week. This is all the great new things you can do. So, for instance, when we you come to the production, sometimes, you know, you need to have a darker environment. So the dark team has been, you know, a big request from all our customers on that controller. So now you can do the dark mode if you want. All right. So, Gary, I'm going to go very fast. Uh, I have uh, on this controller already discovered a lot of switches and I brought them in the controller. But let's start with the GUI because you said about the GUI, right? So if I have only one switch to configure, I don't need maybe to use the, the software controller to do that across the network. But this is the GUI that you can fire up on your browser very easily. And uh, this is where you can tell the switch, you know, I want you to be quiet, for instance. Very important sometimes, right? But let me show you the network profiles. Um, those network profiles are available for you, you know, out of the box so that for NDI, for instance, you have your NDI 4 and your NDI 5 profiles ready to go, ready to select, ready to apply to your ports or your entire switch. But as you can see, we have a pretty busy uh, uh, list of profiles because you never got and the eye on me, right? I mean, usually you have some microphones, you have some speakers, you have a lot of other equipment and uh, you may run those uh, into uh, uh, several VLANs. So you are doing that very simply. But because we are at it today and because we have this uh, topology together, let's say, Gary, we want to set up NDI across that network in less than five minutes. All right. So for that, we are going to use the controller. We go to the site settings. For now, all the ports, you know, they are factory default. They, this is the VLAN 1, the data. Let's create a new profile in this network. We are going to find the NDI 5 profile template. We go next. We are going to give it a name. That's the NDI WIC network. All right, that we are configuring together. A VLAN ID, let's use the VLAN 20, some uh, color so that we can differentiate the ports and go next. So we want to create that NDI VLAN together. Now we can see our network for the VLAN 20. Where do we want NDI? I'm going to select the first M4250 switch up there. Uh, I'm going to select the first four ports. That's where I want to connect my cameras, for instance. And let's say to make it simple, we want to always, always use the first four ports on all other switches. We are going to copy and paste this port count, maybe not at the core, right? We are not going to connect anything at the core, but all other switches, I want to copy and paste that. So now all the switches are yellowish. And I can control quickly that all my switches have port 1234 selected. So we just apply that to the network together. So now we could stay there because it's done. But as you know, Gary, uh, with the NDI, you need to have IP configuration so that your cameras or your equipment, they get an IP address. And if possible, always the same so that you can configure your PTZ controller 
with those statics. So let's go to the routing portion. But as you said, we try to uh, remove the complexity of the usual uh, 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 you know, IT switches. So we are on the VLAN 20. This is the routing planner. What we want to do is to do routing on all the switches. And we are going to say, look, this core switch, I want to use it as a core so that I also do the DHCP server and everything else, even the IGMP querier. All right, so let's do that. And now we can take a look. Um, it should be all set, all right? So we apply this, we go to the VLAN routing, and again, for the VLAN 20, the NDI weak network, we have all the switches. We are going to say, we want to have a DHCP client interface on all the switches. The core switch, because we want to have a DHCP server, we need to assign a static address to that VLAN 20. Let's say 192.168.20.1 and uh, maybe keep a class C. Uh, and the DHCP server is ready for you because you asked for it before. So for your VLAN 20, your DHCP server is going to use 20.1 as a router for all your NDI cameras and equipment. Your DHCP pool, you will start at 10 so that you have some free IPs for your statics and finish at 100, all right? So Lauren, we are if, I, if I plug a PTZ camera in the first four ports of any of those switches, the DHCP yeah. from the core is going to find it, locate it, and every other switch is going to be able to see it on the network, correct? Absolutely. So let's test it right now. So we say that the DHCP server is from 10 to 100, all right? So we apply, yeah, no DNS, no internet. We know that. You need DNSs, right, if you want to have internet connectivity on that VLAN. So all the configuration is pushed to the switches. It's going to take another few more seconds. But yes, Gary, now... Uh, it's all set, all right, the VLAN 20. So if I go back to the topology and if I look at those switches, let's go back to that uh, 48 port switch uh, we, we were uh, using previously, maybe this one. Uh, let's control that. So going to any switch in the network now, I can see that I have four yellow ports, all right, that are ready to do video and the i5 in the VLAN 20. All right. So yes, you're good to go. I have one, I have two little quick things to show you now. Let's go back to the site settings to that VLAN routing section. You know, this is our VLAN 20. If I go to the advanced, but see, it's still quite simple. If I go to the DHCP bindings, I will find all the clients in that DHCP server. Those are the other switches that got an IP address for the VLAN 20. But see, Gary, the DHCP address reservation, it's very crucial. You want to manually add some, some uh, uh, static MAC reservation for your uh, equipment, or you want to import a spreadsheet so that you can have all your MAC addresses for all your PTZ cameras and all your reserved uh, desired IP addresses input into the DHCP server, you import that spreadsheet, and this way all your cameras across your network are going to be, uh, you know, always, always with the same IP. It's a, a good process. Don't go with static for, for NDI. It's much better to go DHCP client with the static reserved uh, IP address. Very and great now, Gary. Yeah, yeah, because um, uh, especially when you have encoders and decoders, what's the worst? The worst is that you have your vMix, for instance, or your production server, and you are losing sometimes your sources, right? Yeah. And and frankly, frankly, uh, this is uh, embarrassing, right? When when you you have a show and you lose a source, so uh, static IPs, static IPs. Uh, it's not a good thing. All those NDI equipments, cameras, encoders, decoders, converters, they really prefer DHCP clients. And then you can reserve so that, of course, they always get the same IP so that your PTZ controller and all your buttons are configured right. Okay? Now, in a world so before your server, the people didn't do that because it was very cumbersome. You had to remember what codes you used. It was all to do. It would take you days to configure that. But you just showed that you can configure that whole thing over the whole network with a matter of clicks. I think it took you less than five minutes to do that. 
Right. And you know why, Gary? It's because, on the other hand, there's a whole lot of things that are done by the system automatically. Because uh, you're uh, experienced enough to know that when you have a bunch of switches together, there's a lot of things that needs to be done in between. <laughs> you know, you need to configure yep. the trunking, you need to configure the link aggregation, you need to make sure that all the VLANs, that they, they communicate with each other. So VLAN tags, PVIDs, you know, uh, name it. So when we set up the NDI uh, week VLAN 20, across the network, when we just select the ports and put the DHCP server on, you, you can be sure that if you do that this way and you don't go messing up things in the IT GUI, the Telnet, the SSH, you, you have the engage controller configuring for you nicely all the trunking, all the lags, everything, so that it works, so that the multicast will work and so that you get rid of that fastidious configuration. Yeah. The engage app is like having an IT professional on your payroll. I mean, it's literally doing all that work that normally would have taken that guy who you call down, who is the only guy who understands how to do it, the only guy who can fix it, the only guy who can change it. And now it's on a GUI that's pretty easy to understand. If you change something, it updates everything. And once again, you were showing a demonstration of switches talking to each other, which I think is very important for this show because while we recommend an end, a Netgear AV switch, even if you're just in a single studio switch, the fact that this is scalable, reliable, and easy to configure and grow is really, really important, which creates us into a great segue to the new level of switches because you guys have had the 4250, you had the 4300, but you just launched the 4350, which I consider to be you know an enterprise level uh, of network switching that's really made to talk to other switches to operate it as part of a bigger networking solution. So if we could jump ahead and you could just review quickly which we say which Netgear switch is right for me. If you can just walk through the, the, the 4250, 4300, 4350 in broad strokes, you know, when you ch choose which one. Absolutely. So it's it's very simple, Gary. Uh, the reason why we have the 4250 versus the 43 and 4350, it's big. there are two reasons. The first reason is, remember when I was talking about the redundancy? If yep. you want to have a redundant, highly available, switch with two different power supplies so that you can manage the power you know on two different ups systems then the 4250 they can do it because they have an internal psu you know it's a, it's a simple yep. switch platform so if you have this multiple power supply requirement, you got to go with the 43 and the 4350s because they are more enterprise class. And on the other side, you have these uh, 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 ugly uh, looking, but good systems for modular PSUs. Of course, the 4250s, they look better, right? Uh, because the, the ports on the back, the, the LEDs on the front. But uh, yes, that's right. The, the 4350s have power redundancy. Second, reason uh, the 4250 is this is a good access level switch at the edge of your network but the the bigger the network becomes the more capacity you need at the center right in order to aggregate all that the core so the 43 and 4350 they, they start where the 4250s just stop 4250s are one gigabit switches with 10 gigabit uplinks but at the core you need a whole lot more 10 gigabit so that you can have a big fabric so the 43 and now the 4350 they have plenty more 10 gigabit and the 4350 is by definition the next generations for the years to come so we have invested a lot of resources so that you get 25 gigabits and 100 gigabit uplinks as well so that you can form redundant aggregation and cores so to answer your question 4250 it's uh, not redundant and it's a good looking simple one gigabit switch with 10 gig uplinks good for one switch two switches installation as soon as you want to expand and get a much bigger network and move a lot more video then you will go with more enterprise class 43 43 50 with those higher speed uplinks so so this this next slide i want you to talk about because i think it tells a lot about 
not just what's different, but more importantly, what's the same and how when you know one, you know the other. But yeah. what I like to do when I'm talking to like a, a corporate IT guy or an educational IT guy, I go, if you're going to set up NDI and you get started, start with a single 4250 switch, get comfortable with it, learn how to do it. But I say at some point, you're going to love it so much, you are going to replace the, the, the switches at the core of your solution with these switches. And one of the things I tell people is it's not just about video over IP, but Right now, your POE management is very hope and a prayer, whereas really when I go out on 4250 at my core and then 4250s at the edge, as you say, I can really manage to distribute my POE much more intelligently and make sure that I don't overload my system and more importantly, that I don't worry about transmission loss. So if you could just jump to this slide. Yeah, of course, because it's always intimidating, okay, especially for uh, AV professionals uh, going to that uh, dark new space with yeah. Ethernet and, and IP. So, uh, uh, of course, you need to, you know, make decisions. So I said 4250, 43, 4350. If you looked at the, the screen when I was, uh, you know, demoing this, my network I configured with you real fast was yeah. actually a mix, a mix of 43, 43. 350 and 4250. Yep. So here the great news is don't be afraid because from a software standpoint, this is all the same. We've really tried and we strived for that. We really tried to have the same AV operating system, the same goodness from the 4250 where everything has started, the IGMP magic that we call IGMP Plus. Yeah. This is the only IGMP platform that you don't even want to know about because IGMP multicast will work across the network no matter what without flooding and then the auto trunk the auto lag all that great automation between switches it's the same uh, the ev user interface the profiles are all the same and the glue if you have a larger network to do is the same controller so that if you have several switches from several families it doesn't make a difference. It's all configured the same and it all work in concert. Cool, so this next one just goes into some of the differentiators. If we could bring it up a full screen, you don't have to go through the whole chart, but there's a couple of differentiators you wanna point out in this chart for our, for our audience. Oh, absolutely. So uh, the, let's start with the right, the style. If you have a customer facing rack, Gary, you know, a, a good looking AV rack, you don't want to have any cabling in the front, right? So the 4250s, they let you do that. They are reversible, but you can have the LEDs in the front and then you have your wiring and cabling and power cables on the back. Now, if you uh, uh, instead have an IDF or an MDF or like a cabinet, you know, an IT room, and if you have those requirements for more uh, redundancy, uh, for better availability, yep. then yes, 43, 4350, they have those modular PSUs. They are uglier because, you know, on that, on that back, you have the power supplies. But the 4350, though, they look better because they are black now. All right. <laughs> and now if you go back to the uh, first column, uh, as I said, you know, th those animals, uh, they, they belong to the same family, but on, uh, they don't have the same hardware. So the 4250 is good for one gigabit uh, NDI so that you have the 10 gigabit ports aggregating that to the next switch or to the core. But the 43 and now the 4350, look at that. It's a new world of uh, multi-gig, 10 gig, 25 gig and 100 gig Ethernet, so that even if you have a fairly large network and you don't only move your uh, NDI, but you also move your AES67, Bolero, Riddell, you know, Bell Packs and Tenas yep. and some some Dante and some uh, uh, lighting and, and you know, uh, whatever else, you can do it because at the core you have more bandwidth. So the best combination moving forward will probably be a redundant 4350 core or several of them uh, and then the 4250s for your access and speaking of redundancy the power redundancy is the other differentiator and that the 4350s can have a redundant power supply where the 4250 is just a single power supply absolutely and uh, on the other hand you you'd be surprised gary but uh, it's intimidating you know when you have those options because then you need to pick 
yeah. the right piece and all that. So if you if you don't want to have a problem, if you want to be ready to go out of the box, like we say, you know, uh, on on a on a on a on a gig, for instance, you know, always go with the forty two fifty. You take the box, you have you have it all. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Now the next thing I want to talk about is a uh, a case study with uh, the Nasdaq video wall and some of the work you're doing with Nasdaq. Now I was told that's all I'm allowed to say about it, so I'm going to kick it over to you. And you can talk about what this user case story is because it's really exciting. But there's some things you can't say and some things you can't. Yeah, no, of course. So, I mean, you may know that the Nasdaq is a, is a great uh, organization, the U.S., you know, and Netgear is, uh, you know, at the Nasdaq because Netgear is a perfect company. But yes, uh, uh, we don't have a, if you wish, a formal press release or a, a formal case study because, you know, uh, uh, the Nasdaq is the Nasdaq. But what I'm going to tell you is, is public anyway. Did you know, Gary, that this organization, this large organization, when they moved away from, you know, uh, digital or analog uh, SDI yeah. uh, for their video uh, uh, and uh, their, their uh, studios and their uh, EV, they actually went full NDI, full NDI for the production servers and for the, the, the fixed large screens and yeah. NDI checks NDI checks in all the conference rooms and all the also the large boardroom and you know why it's because with NDI checks they could go wireless so the great news is that uh, the whole NDI uh, network is uh, of course running on Netgear uh, AV line it's a combination between 4250s and 4300s but for the boardroom and for the conference rooms they have Netgear Wi-Fi 6e access points and if uh, uh, the video guys uh, and uh, broadfield you go public uh, you know and and uh, getting introduced the uh, nasdaq the you, you'll be interviewed you'll be interviewed in the boardroom with those fancy ipads you know running yep. the ndi application and uh, you have uh, if i remember well you have uh, 12 streams at checks that are running on the single access point so wirelessly and then all that ndi traffic is aggregated uh, later on on the network up to the production servers yeah that, that's an amazing story i want to switch gears on you a little bit because there's a new competitor, complementer, don't know what you want to call it, to NDI, and that's Dante, who is just the kings of the AV, the audio over IP world, but to get into AV that I want you to talk about. And then there's also a new protocol coming, uh, SMTT ST2110. So if you just talk about those, not going too deep, but these are covered. Your AV IP switches handle these phenomenally, correct? That's it. that is correct. So, well, uh, we need to uh, differentiate a little bit. So, okay. Sempty, uh, the ST twenty one ten, it's uh, really for the the broadcast world, you know, and primarily for the TV channels, you know, and and their studios. So, the Sempty ST ST twenty one ten has been invented to really, you know, move from SDI to the broadcast uh, timing. Uh, requirements. So it's, it's requiring a very strict PTP uh, network so that, you know, all the uh, all the audio and all the video streams, they just follow the same clock, right, uh, uh, for the studio, but also for the client. So ST2110 is, uh, you know, uh, the let's say the ultra high end yeah. uncut Compressed, uncompressed video and uncompressed audio. So for audio, that's AES67. Yeah. Now you spoke about Dante. So yep. of course Dante is, uh, you know, a, a, a lead, one of the leaders, if not the most important leader in the uh, EV over IP for audio with the Dante. Dante is a, a protocol that is a variant of AES67, if you wish. But uh, the great news about Dante is that you have more than one million different products shipping in the world as we speak with Dante, microphones, speakers, and all that. So the uh, Dante for audio was very, very famous. And yes, of course, Audinate in Australia, they said, well, we should do video as well with Dante. So that's why the uh, Dante AV uh, was born. And now they are pushing, you know, as an alternative. So Dante AV and ABH, it's, it's really much an alternative. It's another uh, video over IP uh, uh, 
uh, technology that can be uh, complementary actually because you you start to see already some cameras and uh, the production servers they can take it all so that's a great news with AV over IP if you have a good AV network then you can plug several types of AV over IP and aggregate that on your production servers anyway see that's important because just as with you solve the problems of having the different players of NDI work together in the Dante world there's different versions of Dante but there's also AVB and there's QSIS and AES67. And I know on the audio side, the IT guys would go crazy trying to get them all to work and play together. And just like you did on the NDI side, you really solve that. If you've got the different audio type IPs through one of your switches, they can really work together in harmony. So well done on that one. Hey, thank you. And uh, you know, it's very new. Uh, it's very new. We we went live uh, back in June. You know, uh, almost not not even six months ago, right? In Infocom. So uh, why? Because yes, we we got we got clocked sometimes. You know, uh, those those AV of IP technologies they don't play fair with each other. You know what I mean? It's the wild wild west. So when you configure a network to do Dante. It is then going to, uh, you know, impact the AES 67 because the quality of service is different. So your timing, your PTP packets, those little tiny packets that you really want to take care of, right? Because uh, they need to be first in line all the time so that the the Dante controller or the, uh, the, 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 the controllers in general don't, don't say those devices are offline. Well, so long story short, we went through a lot of uh, technical support help. You said it, Netgear, ProEV Design, so ProEV Design, Netgear.com, ProEV Design, Netgear.com. Uh, we helped manually with, uh, you know, various techniques yep. to compensate the, the configuration so that we can be more elastic. But yes, by now, it's all past history because we said that's enough so we worked for uh, approximately one year and uh, starting june if you upgrade your firmware on any netgear switch 42 43 whatever and if you apply a dante profile or an as 67 profile or an avb profile there will be zero impact even if you have those concurrent streams the switch is going to carry that with the right quality of service now yeah. a little a uh, uh, caveat but you guys solved it and that is that the dante audio stuff all plays together nicely but ndi and dante don't and one of the things that i think makes your switches so great is i can set ports on the same switch some for ndi or hx3 and others for dante so that my vlans play in their own playgrounds at the same time but ndi and dante currently have no interoperability that i'm aware of correct let me let me temper that. It was one of the reasons why there was a war between the United States and Australia for many years because <laughs> the, the the new tech the new tech tech support teams and the Audinate tech support teams you know they were playing tennis together yep. right and uh, but uh, frankly things are going better. If you remember when I showed the Netgear NDI five profile yep. that used, we actually claim the support of Dante, QSIS, and AES67 in the same VLAN. Ah. So, Gary, if you're absolutely sure, but you got to be sure, right, that yeah. your cameras, that all your NDI ecosystem is really NDI5 and not NDI4, yeah. then maybe not in a large university or a giant network, but in a uh, mid-scale uh, network with like five, 10 switches, we can actually make that cohabit, all right? We are certified for that. So NDI 5 solved that problem because the reliable UDP transport is less aggressive for the little tiny audio packets. Cool. But yes, after that, if you want to have a uh, I would say more industry standard or world class kind of a, a topology. It's always, always a good practice to say, okay, I have my NDI, this is my uh, oh, my VLAN for NDI, and then I have my Dante. I'm going to have another VLAN, and and of course, when you got to aggregate, like in your production server for that show today.
today. You just need to have additional NICs, additional network yep. card on, on your production server so that you can tap into the NDI VLAN a yellow port and you can tap into the other VLANs for the other audio streams, for instance. Cool. So I want to jump ahead a little bit. We talked about 2110 as the broadcast standard, but you guys are ready for it. And I believe in the near future, a couple of the 4350 switches will actually have 2110 compatibility. Can you talk about that? I don't know if you can give us production dates, but just what you're comfortable telling us about 2110 and oh. 4350 oh. switches. No, absolutely. So, you know, it's live information, so th there's nothing confidential. And uh, uh, this is live information. Go to uh, the 4350, netgear.com slash M4350. It's all there. Uh, so the data sheet is claiming the support for ST, ST2110 uh, and the boundary clock and the grandmaster clock and the, the best grandmaster election process everything for January. So Gary, in January of next year, so it's actually uh, in eight to nine weeks from now, right? Uh, we are going to ship those two models, uh, the copper PWE++ and the fiber 25 gig uh, uh, models with the 100G uplink so that for the first time we can get rid of that SMT ST2110 with the PTP profiles ST2059-2 uh, and so forth, uh, so that we can apply the SMT the same way across the network with the simple PTP profile for, for that. So awesome. this is coming in January. And I want to make sure people know that NDI is supported in 2110. It's like a subset there. So things are 2110, they're going to support NDI. They're just going to do a whole lot more. And that's really exciting. Lauren, I'm going to ask you if maybe sometime in the end of January, February, we can get you back on the show. Maybe we'll bring in someone from the Panasonic Kairos team, and maybe we'll bring in someone from the Matrox uh, Connect IP team, and we'll really go over what you need for a 2110 infrastructure. But this is NDI November, so that's enough talking about other stuff that's not NDI. I want to talk about where you see the future of Netgear and NDI. And you've talked about it a little bit, but... Are we ready for wireless? You know, when NDI first came out, we had some wireless products and they ended up being not as customer satisfying as they should have been. But I think things are changing and I'm real excited because we do see that, you know, wireless is coming back between Killaview and Atomos and Bird Dog. So talk a little bit, is Netgear with NDI wireless ready? Yes, we are, and uh, we are in production on the Nasdaq, you know, for instance. But uh, let me let me give some more insight on that. So uh, uh, traditionally, you know, uh, uh, Wi-Fi is less deterministic. You know, what you want for AV is a good delivery, best effort, but good delivery with a good timing. So it's always more of a challenge on Wi-Fi. But with the Wi-Fi 6E that is shipping, Today, in the Netgear uh, uh, commercial portfo portfolio, uh, we can actually reasonably, uh, you know, handle a lot of NDI HX streams, for instance, on one access point. So this is actually possible. I wouldn't uh, uh, put a, a full Wi-Fi and, and wireless installation from, uh, you know, the beginning to the end. Right. But uh, in some applications, when you need to be mobile, when you need to have some uh, endpoints like those encoders, decoders, those cameras, uh, 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 in, 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 without cabling, it's possible. But the great news is actually with the Wi-Fi 7 that is actually shipping already in Netgear, in the home consumer uh, business unit. We call it Netgear OB. So, you know, that's mesh systems yep. for residential. Uh, the Wi-Fi 7 is live in Netgear and we can't wait. We pre-announced it, but uh, uh, very soon at the first large AV show that's going to be ISC in, in uh, early February uh, next year in Barcelona, we will uh, showcase the, the new commercial uh, Wi-Fi 7. And um, I want to spend a little bit of time on that because with Wi-Fi 7, uh, more, more channels, you know, more bandwidth, 
and we hope we hope more predictability and uh, i strongly believe that uh, uh, if we can be put at work in netgear with uh, all these great partners that you guys have at video guys and broadfield yeah. I'm, I'm very confident we can actually make this world uh, change uh, next year with with uh, a very good support with wi-fi i, 7. I love yeah. that because no number one request we get from dealers and and customers is that they have certain areas of where they are where they have to go wi-fi Maybe it's a church that's a historic business that they just will not let them put wiring in. Maybe it's trying to cover, you know, a field that, you know, or a stadium or a, uh, a gymnasium where they want to get, you know, cameras into spots that just it's not convenient to run a cable to. And I just love the idea of this. Do you think we'd see a point where those Wi-Fi 7 endpoints could be accessed and controlled through the Engage app as well? Or is it just going to be they work? So Netgear is a public company. I told you at the <laughs> NASDAQ, so I need to speak under control of the CSC and a whole bunch of other organizations. But yeah, that might be a very good idea. That might be a very good idea. And uh, we might work on that already. So uh, if we want to if we want to simplify AV over IP, I think exactly. it's time next year. It's time next year that we can insert yeah. Wi-Fi access points and just, you know, deploy NDI and other AV technologies right there without those fastidious configuration. Because, I mean, you probably set up Wi-Fi in your home already once yeah. or twice, right, yeah. Gary? It's, it's, it's very complicated too, right? I mean, Wi-Fi is complicated if you want to have different VLANs, you yeah. need to tag the ports, do the trunks. It's a mess. So... Very well, yes. Uh, we all agree it could be a very good idea. And, you know, the most important thing is if I'm going to do Wi-Fi in a public place where I'm streaming, I have to be able to reserve a certain degree of that Wi-Fi for my production versus a bunch of people on their phone in the venue. So I love that you're thinking that way. You didn't say it. I requested it. You're just saying great idea. That's all you said. I appreciate that. This has been a great show. We almost hit the hour mark. So I knew me and you were going to get going. It was going to get a little longer, but... Phenomenal show. Anytime I have a guest on the show, you've been a guest before, you know, I always like to give you that last word. Is there anything else you want to say to our audience about NDI November, about Netgear, about anything? The floor is yours. So, well, first of all, thank you. We are honored at Netgear to uh, be a member of the uh, Video Guys and the uh, NDI Week and the Broadfield family. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing, uh, we repeat it, but I think it's worth uh, one more time. If you have any question, if you need any help before, during, or after an installation, just reach out to the video guys, to Broadfield, and to the Netgear Pro EV Design team. So it's very simple. Pro EV Design at Netgear.com. Pro EV Design, Netgear.com. Less than two hours, far less than two hours at any time during the weekdays. We are here to help you. We can get our hands dirty and we can help you figure out, configure, and even troubleshoot. So thank you. And uh, well, congratulations for this great show. Thank you. More shows coming up. Tomorrow's show, I believe, is on uh, PTZ cameras. I think Jim's going to be hosting that one, but I want to thank you so much. And we're going to send you out one of these hats. So next time you do a show, you can have your. NDI hat available. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you for being on the show. Great show. NDI November. We're going to roll some commercials, tell you about some of the uh, drawings we're doing for uh, free swag and free stuff like that, plus what's coming up on the rest of the shows. And remember, you will be able to log in and see all these shows later. And if you couldn't stay for the whole show, it's okay. It'll be available for you to download and watch on demand. Thank you very much. Great job, Lauren. Thank you, Netgear, my number one tech support solution for any NDI problem I ever have. NDI November. This was great. Great show. Thank you so much. Great job, team. And uh, I'll be back next week with the show. But tomorrow, I think it's going to be Jim. Thank you. The CRN500 is an affordable option with flagship specs, including dual pixel autofocus with face detection. It also features high quality 4K 30p through HDMI and full HD 60p output through 3G SDI, USB, and IP with integrated support for NDI HX and SRT through a 1 inch UHD CMOS sensor and 15 times optical zoom. The CRN700 ups the ante with dual pixel autofocus with eye detection and 4K 60p video output. This makes it perfect for sports and other high frame rate productions. Output via 12G SDI, 3G SDI, 
HDMI, and IP with integrated support for NDI HX and SRT. Power with PoE++ and easily integrate into any production environment. With JVC, using your NDI camera couldn't be easier. NDI features plug-and-play operation, connecting cameras such as RPTZs to your network with a single cable. Using NDI technology, our products come with maximum compatibility in mind. Whether it's the big game or the big meeting, JVC knows performance matters. I subscribe to a couple of uh, search publications on technology. So going through um, my email one day, I came across the Aspire program. I called my pastor, I, I told him what I saw. I looked at it, I said, that might be good, somebody could win that. The NDI system, it's actually great because, you know, even with the setup, you know, there is less cabling, and that's a, that's a plus. That's something that, you know, when you think about one cable, that's an game power, the network capabilities, and your connectivity is great. And then I was able to use that as well to get into the camera. NDI features plug-and-play operation, connecting cameras such as RPTZs to your network with a single cable. Using NDI technology, our products come with maximum compatibility in mind. JVC is a recognized leader using NDI in the industry. NDI-enabled devices like JVC's new PTZ NDI camera exponentially increase the video sources available for storytellers, creating efficiencies and opportunities for NDI and for JVC customers who can now enjoy the benefits and freedom that IP content brings. And this offer, this gift from JVC really has been a blessing. Um, it won't have confirmed a lot of what I was talking about, especially with the PTD cameras, how easy it is to work, how it can work for our system, how you don't need that many people to operate it, and you can still put out a product that matches some of the churches that probably would have invested half a million dollars in the system. Make the investment, take the leap, sit with a professional for yourself who understands the media, who understands growth and pain. Select a system that's cost effective, that can grow over time. Invest in that system. We want to trip. Getting feedback from church members when they come and say that their friends who are at all I'm all tuning in and recognizing that there's a change, there's some type of improvement in the production. We hope that we are able to retain those folks and uh, get them to spread the message from the change. We give you our hearts, we give you our minds, we give you our time, we give you our talents. I've been a fan of JVC since 1978. And uh, I, I know that this is a joke within myself. Eventually I coined the phrase, nothing comes between me and my agency. Hi everyone, this is Judy from Killer View. Um, so, you know, actually this is our second time to be part of India in November. Um, in the past year, we actually have announced a lot of NDI new products, uh, which includes our Cube R1 recorder, uh, the M5 and N6, the full functional NDI uh, converter that can support all NDI protocols, encoding and decoding all in one, as well as our E3 and D350, which can support uh, and the HX for encoding and decoding, while at the same time, it can support the other protocols based on H.264 and H.265.
To our one NDI recorder is a turnkey solution for NDI recording. As you mentioned, it can support up to nine channels of the recording simultaneously. And what's more, you know, this device is a kind of uh, NDI recorder that will be compatible with all NDI formats, no matter is NDI high bandwidth, uh, NDI HX2 or 3, or, you know, any resolution up to 4K, uh, coming from any different video resources and from the device you will be able to see that we can uh, easily just preview all the videos you can uh, just set up the layout and also we have the physical patterns to start stop the recording or we can even uh, play back while recording and what's important you know is even we can output the NDI resource while you are playing back and we got two SSDs, that means you will be able to support the local recording and we have the backup solution as well. So for the N5 and the N6, um, you know, this is actually the most competitive uh, NDI converters on this market because it can support both NDI high bandwidth and the HX2, HX3 for encoding and decoding in the same box. So that means no matter you have any kind of uh, video sources, inputs in whatever NDI formats, then it can easily just get back to the baseband SDI or HDMI. Or if you have the videos, inputs, and the, no matter what kind of NDI flavors you want, just choose the M5 and N6. It can perfectly meet into workflow uh, so you don't need to even think about what's the video source what's your output and you know both of the devices got the video inputs and the loop through and also we have the displays to show the status as well as uh, getting it as a kind of a tally so all those kind of functions are all included and very good price so uh, yeah, the E3 and the D350 actually um, the products um, you know that can work together as a kind of pairing for video transmission. Uh, the thing is, the E3 can not only support NDI, but also we have included like SRT, RTMP, RTSP, and quite a lot of the other protocols based on H.264 and H.265. Uh, most importantly, the E3 can support 4K HDMI inputs as well as the 3G SDI inputs simultaneously. So that means you got two inputs and then you can easily bring both of the video inputs into IP streams, either in NDI or in the other protocols with SRT for remote transmission. And what's important, you can even mix the HDMI and SDI together as a kind of picture-in-picture, picture-back-picture, picture, video uh, as another video source. And the same as uh, what I mentioned for the M5, N6, we will be able to uh, got the display to show the status. We got, uh, you know, the touch screen to uh, change all the parameters while also the display can even work as a tally um, yeah and also very cost effective as well and also I would like to talk about the D350 which actually is a kind of affordable and reliable decoder that we can easily bring almost all types of the IP protocols you can imagine including full in the eye into the decoder and we can get back get back to uh, 3G SDI as well as 4K HDMI out. And not only for uh, decoding, the D350 can even work as a multi viewer. So you will be able to bring all kinds of the IP streams in and on the web UI, you will be able to uh, see all those videos in the multi view and you can select whatever video source to output. And uh, other functions, even we will be able to add the uh, overlay, we will be able to switch between different video sources seamlessly. So altogether, you know, the E3 and the D350 would be a kind of perfect solution for your IP video transmission, not only for NDI, but also all kinds of IP protocols and is very, very reliable and affordable.
So if you're looking for an ecosystem that's easy to use, easy to set up, and future-proof to engage your students or audience, the Panasonic Connect Solutions is what you want to consider. One of the strengths of our PTZ cameras for a classroom or a corporate room is a really accurate voice-triggered auto-tracking. Built-in auto-tracking will be available in July on our AWUE 40, AWUE 50, and then in November, we'll deliver it on our AWUE 80, all part of our premium series PTZs. Introducing the PTZ Optics Move 4K, the 4K PTZ camera for under 2K. The Move 4K is a 4K PTZ camera that comes in 12X, 20X, and 30X models. Every Move 4K has the same ports on the back of the unit, and something that we like to call total connectivity. The Move 4K has auto tracking capabilities built directly into the camera. No software needed. Now available at videoguys.com. Hey everybody, my name is James Fresca. I'm a video production specialist here with NDI November, and I am super excited to introduce you to Paul Richards from PTZ Optics, and he's gonna tell us all about the Super Joy and some of the great features that it can do. So, Paul, why don't we throw it your way and you tell us all these great features. Hey everybody, welcome to another cool sh episode of NDI November. Happy to be here. Um, I have a little presentation coming through NDI to my producer that I can show you guys. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is the PTZ Optics Superjoy. Um, so what we have here is the NDI joystick controller. I believe it is really the end certified NDI joystick controller, meaning it can discover any NDI camera on your network, and it can send commands to through HTTP and CGI to NDI devices. So what I'll show you today, and I'll do a little live demo, is automatically discovering any NDI camera on your network. Uh, with the Super Joy, this camera, this joystick will also control any Sony camera, any Panasonic camera, and pretty much any PTZ camera that uses Sony Visca over IP. So Bird Dog, Marshall, there's a long list. Honestly, almost any PTZ camera this will control, including security cameras via OnVIF. So this is we've our engineers have put so much time into this to control almost any system. And to look at it in a diagram here, we've got serial cameras that are daisy chained together. So this can control serial cameras. It can control IP cameras, uh, whether those are you know, using Sony. I'm also going to show Panasonic support today, um, but also any camera that supports NDI, NDI HX3 should have, uh, should be able to be controlled by the Superjoy even cameras coming in over the internet. So down in the bottom right here, I'm gonna show you today a camera coming using NDI Bridge through the public internet, not even on the same local area network, on a separate local area network, coming in to the PTZ Optics Superjoy. Another cool thing about the Superjoy is it's got an HDMI output, so you can see the video of this device on a, a screen as well. So this is actually showing the NDI bridge, and I'm going to open that up in a moment here, going from one wide area network to, an, to another and working over, um, over anywhere in the world to control PTZ cameras. So it's really cool. Excited to show that. On this joystick, we also have four custom buttons. So those custom buttons, and there's actually a fifth with the button on the top of the joystick controller here, can send commands directly to any device on your local area network that supports HTTP. So on a NewTek TriCaster or a vMix system, you can send a, a command to start recording or start streaming. Uh, it also supports super presets, which I think we'll take a moment at. But before I get into the super advanced settings uh, it also has a basic mode and uh you know a lot of uh, this is a quote from one of our church customers you know a lot of their team members aren't that tech savvy and they love the super joy for its basic mode uh, but for those of uh, pro users on the other side of the, the world um that are using dynamic dns and controlling there's actually an api for the super joy and john mahoney is one of those folks this super joy can be taken very far um into networking and production. So 
you can really realize your vision, even if you're just getting started with a couple NDI cameras, or if you're trying to control a couple old security cameras, an NDI camera, you've got a legacy Panasonic, maybe even serial cameras. Uh, it can really, it can really support it all. Um, so in a moment here, I'm really excited about this. I'm going to show you the SuperJoy controlling camera from, you know, over NDI bridge. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And, the, the idea here is that your entire ecosystem could be controlled from the SuperJoy. Uh, we can send commands to your vMix system for that recording and streaming. We can uh, send commands to, to decoders and NDI devices, and then, of course, your PTZ cameras. And I mentioned that HDMI output, it's a low latency video feed from the joystick to any monitor so that you can see the camera you're controlling. This is really good as your team grows and you want to show, you know, more cameras having the capability. Um, another feature that we've been showing a lot with the SuperJoy is because it supports HTTP commands, we can turn off and on auto tracking, um, which is nice because, you know, a lot of people are starting to use uh, PTZ cameras uh, for controlling them, but then deciding, hey, I think I want to uh, turn this camera into automatic control mode, uh, which we can do with the click of a button. Uh, even that top of that joystick button can be set up, and I'll, I'll show that in a minute. Now, something I'm also going to show in my live demo area is a super preset. And what that is is a single button that can move up to, I think it's seven cameras at the same time. And so, for example, you might have, and, and this is a house of worship, but this applies to almost any situation. If you have four or five areas of the stage with a single button, you can have all your PTZ cameras zoom into there. So you might have a left stage wide, you might have a left zoomed in, you might have a center shot. You can automatically move all your cameras to the scene that you'd like with a single super preset. So very valuable. We got a lot of customers using that as well. Um, so I'm excited about this. Uh, on November 28th, we'll be doing a uh, webinar where you can actually win a SuperJoy. So check, uh, check out our website and our social medias for that. But now what I'd like to do is show you guys uh, NDI Bridge, which I have running now. Now here's my NDI Bridge, and I've got it running right here. And this is bridging. You can see I'm receiving. If I, I might want to zoom into this really quickly a little bit. I'm receiving 5 megabits, 7 megabits per second over the, over the internet. That is where I'm getting this video over here. So if I zoom out, uh, you can see I'm using NDI Studio Monitor to control this camera here. So this is a video source. And how did I connect to this video source? Well, um, first of all, you set up NDI Bridge, which uh, I'm running here as the host. And then I on the far end, we clicked the Join button and we joined our NDI Bridge here. And um, basically, the uh, public IP address and just has a port number. And it you port forward that that traffic coming to my computer here. And now NDI Bridge is working beautifully. So with the SuperJoy, what I can do is I can log into the SuperJoy. The SuperJoy has an IP address. I log into it and I can search my entire network for all NDI cameras. And you can see I've got a lot of them. Guilty is charged, right? But one of these here is different from the other. That's because one of these is coming in over the bridge. And there it is. There it is right there. So these have the dash bridge on them. And that means they are coming through, uh, through the bridge. And so all you got to do is click add. And you can add PTZ cameras from anywhere in the world and control them. So what I'm going to do here, I've already added it. And I can double check that by looking at uh, camera six here is coming in via NDI. All right. The IP address is different from my local area network. It's um, all the way. Actually, the IP address is actually, I think, the same IP address as my machine. Um, and then now with my SuperJoy, I can control this camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and oh, it looks like there's someone over there setting up a conference. And you can see I'm not using this PTZ area here, right? I'm using my SuperJoy uh, to control a camera from the far end. So this really opens remote production up for a lot of different scenarios where I can control a PTZ camera from anywhere in the world. So that's what I wanted to show you today is the PTZ Optics SuperJoy, all of the features. Um, 
you know, some of the things that we talked about is the basic mode that the, it offers. We offer a matrix mode. And then we offer those custom buttons here, which we have set up to trigger auto tracking. Uh, but you can actually set these up to do those super presets where you can have up to, looks like up to seven cameras. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cameras and a custom command sent with a single super preset button. So really powerful stuff. Thanks for letting me come on today and show this off. Uh, what the PTZ Optics Super Joy is capable of. It's really at the most one of the most advanced joysticks available today. It's $899. It is the key to really unifying your NDI productions and bringing everything together into one control platform. Well, thanks for showing us that, Paul. I really like the SuperJoy controller, and we use one in our studio. So thank you for showing me some of those more advanced features. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, James. All right. See you later. See ya.